Hi there, this is going to be a video on an Ubuntu Mate 2004 OEM configuration install, whatever. Uh, so here we have Ubuntu Mate starting up in a virtual machine. Uh, it's basically GNOME boxes that I'm running it from. And here we are with our Raptor screen. We have a very nice system configuration window. So in this case, we're going to say, OK, welcome, English, and continue. So what we'll do is we will choose, what will we choose? English, US, change this to English, US with the euro on five we'll continue here actually before we go we'll just make sure yep there we go euro on five that works so we'll continue we'll choose our place as sydney just for jollies continue so in this section you just say who you are so i will say for me mark and you can see here your computer's name comes up as mark and then basically it takes the fact that you're using a virtual machine to fill out the rest of it so I might change that to mark's I suppose you want to give a good host name, so you want it to be something that you'll recognize it as. So we'll say Mark Laptop. I don't know. We'll say Mark Dell Laptop and leave it at that. Pick a username. Mark is perfect. You can choose whatever you want there. And then your password. Now, I would suggest you look at X or look up XKCD password. That gives you a good idea of what uh, passwords you should use. Um, you should generally choose something that is going to be easy to remember, but it's also going to be hard to guess. Okay, so. In my case, I'm just going to use test one, two, three, four. I can't believe it's saying it's a fair password because it's not. But test one, two, three, four. Okay, and I'm going to choose to log in automatically because it's going to be the best thing to do for this particular demo. And then you'll probably want to leave it as require my password to log in. But, you know, I mean, if your PC is just sitting at home, and you're the only one who ever is going to access it, just leave it as login automatically. Otherwise, if it's a shared computer or if you're if it is a laptop and you're bringing it out and about, then just put in require my password to log in. And then continue. So now it's we've got a, a welcome to Ubuntu screen here because it's doing some configuration stuff in the background. So it's telling us this Ubuntu is fast and full of new features. The latest version of Ubuntu makes computing easier than ever. I have to agree with that. Ubuntu is a fantastic operating system. Here are just a few cool new things to look out for. So let's click here and see what it has to say. Find even more software. Say goodbye to searching the web for new software. With access to the Snap Store and the Ubuntu Software Archive, you can find and install new apps with ease. Just type in what you're looking for or explore categories such as graphics and photography, games and productivity, alongside helpful reviews from other users. So now, I suppose with Ubuntu Mate, it's going to be slightly different because you'll have the software boutique. Uh, so we just went on to the next. Oh, looks like we're applying changes. It'll tell you how quick it is. You don't even get the chance to go through all the actual 
slideshow before you get to applying changes so here we are we can look at details here that'll show us exactly what's going on so yeah looks like it's just uh, setting up the the boot for for this machine so we just leave it do its thing this can actually take a while so you know don't worry just leave it do its thing and it'll do it soon enough Oh, it's already running post installation things. Oh, look at this. It's rebooting. And it's rebooted into the main menu. So now, this is great because the first thing you see is the welcome screen. This guy here. So, the first thing you're asked is whether you want to send telemetry or not. Now all this does is it helps improve Ubuntu Mate. So Ubuntu Mate can submit anonymized system information that will help the developers better understand what devices Ubuntu Mate is being used on. This data will be presented one time only and includes basic system components, but nothing that is uniquely identifiable. Now I'm not going to send telemetry here because I mean, this is just a virtual machine that I've spun up just for this demo basically so you know it's not something that they really want to see but I would normally send telemetry because it's useful for Ubuntu Mate to get that kind of information so here we are at the welcome screen so before you go any further I would seriously have a look at this welcome screen the welcome screen is one of the best things that Ubuntu Mate has. It's why I would recommend Ubuntu Mate to new users of Linux and Ubuntu. So give it a look. Okay. Uh, so this is telling us it's Ubuntu Mate 2004. And then the getting started is nicely highlighted here in green. You've got your introduction and your features. So we'll go with the introduction first. So this is telling us that Ubuntu Mate is for a retrospective future. So we'll scroll down like it says, and you get all your info here on what makes Ubuntu Mate a great operating system. It gives you the objectives. What is Ubuntu Mate? And it's basically Ubuntu, which is a Linux distribution, and the Mate desktop, which is a kind of a desktop environment. And you also get all these lovely tools to go along with this. It's open source and it's brilliant. They forget to say that bit. So now we'll just go back to the main menu of the welcome screen. And then we'll have a quick look at features. So it tells you all about how great it is. It's got built-in security. It has a firewall. It has all that kind of lovely stuff productivity oh yes LibreOffice another fantastic feature that you get for free so you've got entertainment Shotwell is your photo manager Sally Lloyd is your media player and loads more so you can see here and mobile integration as well which is a nice feature so we'll go back now this is where the the meat is we'll say so getting started this is an important one this you need to kind of look at I think as a new user so we'll click on getting started so you've got all these different topics right and you see up here you've got your previous and next and your topics so start with start go to updates and extras click on that first thing you do is you check for updates so just click on that you can see it opens up this window and it's telling you that it's checking for updates it's finished and it's telling us that, that there are actually updates to do. So what we'll do so is we'll install those updates. And off it goes installing the updates. All very simple. Sometimes it may look for a password, sometimes it may not, but these are the this is what it's actually doing. And now it's updating snaps and it's telling us the system or the software in this computer is now up to date. So we can say OK. So now we go on to the next bit. We have the additional codecs installed. So 
this is codex are basically uh, things that allow you to watch uh, video, uh, play audio, and all the rest of it. So it's telling us that the codex packages include a complete cross-platform solution to decode, encode, record, convert, and stream audio and video. It also includes an MP3 audio decoder that permits the playback of MPEG-1 audio 3. We also have the DVD and, and Blu-ray playback support added here. Um, additional screen savers, they may or may not be there, so install them if you wish. Uh, and to change your screen saver then, just click on change. And look at all the choices you've got. Now, to be honest, I've never been much of a, a fan of screensavers, but they're a big deal for some people, so I'll leave it on the juggler, I think. Okay, so we'll close that. Then you've got additional themes, so you can change appearance. So if we click on this, you see all the different looks that your desktop can have. Okay. I'll just stick with the with the default team here, but what we can do actually is we can just have a quick look at the uh, dark theme. And there we go. Look at that. And then you've got all the extra wallpapers. Now I'll just minimize this for a moment. You can see that the default wallpaper is nice, but you may not like it. So you get all these different wallpapers to choose from. Oh, sorry, hang on, I'm in the wrong place. Oh yeah, change appearance. So now we go to background. Hopefully this will populate in a second. I don't want to add any. I was just too impatient. Now, look at all these. A plethora of wallpapers here. So now let's choose this one. So now, as you can see, you've now got this as your background. Or wallpaper, whatever you wish to call it. Okay, so that is the first topic dealt with. So we'll now move on to the, the next topic by clicking next. So you've got drivers and firmware packages. Now this should be done. The one thing you might want to do is go to printers. So here you just click on this and then you say when you set up a printer in the printer's utility you'll be presented with a list of drivers available to use if applicable so some manufacturers may provide their own drivers and require you to download them from their website now hopefully you have a hp printer because that is the, the most compatible with linux and if you do you just click install here and off you go okay so now we'll move on to next because that's all we can do with these topics now here we are in language support click on this button and it'll go off checking your language so you should have english australia here if not click this let's say this is this is the one we want to use so english united states we want to drag this to the top and there you go, but we'll leave it with English Australia. Okay, and then when you've made your changes and you're happy with them, just click apply system wide, then go on to regional formats, choose your region, make sure that's set to where you want it to be set to, and then apply system wide and then close. So now that's pretty much all we have to do in this particular topic. So we'll just move on to next. Backup firewall and user management. Now these are important tasks. Um, with backups, you should probably have a, an external hard drive 
to configure backup, so I might do that in a separate video. Um, network shares, only install Samba. If you do have a network and you want to share with Windows systems, and then your firewall, you should probably configure your firewall. Now you need to put in your password to enter this, which is test123, authenticate. Now your profile will normally be home, status, turn it to on, and then incoming, deny, outgoing, allow. And that's it. That's, that's as easy as it gets. Okay. So once we have that done, we'll close that. Now setting the firewall isn't overly important. You can leave it off. And I just say that because normally with Ubuntu, all ports are closed by default. So you will get away with those configuring the firewall. But it's always better to have the firewall on and to deny incoming. Okay, and here you can configure further users. So if the, the one user you have isn't enough, go in here and configure users and go to here, add. And you need to authenticate to do that. So put in your password again. And then just add the, us the user's name. New password, Joe1234. We'll do really good passwords for this. No one will ever guess that. You can set it to generate random password. Now, the only problem with that is you're stuck with a password you'll never remember. So I think it's better to put in a password that is easy to remember but hard to guess. And now there we have our extra user. Now you can change the icon, can you not? No. Um, okay, anyway, doesn't matter. It's no big deal. It's only eye candy. So now uh, we shall now go on to next. And next brings us on to the control center. You can have a look at that if you wish. This is where all the groovy stuff happens in your operating system. So if you're ever looking to do stuff, this is the place to look. It's in your control center. So here you go. You've got all your various bits and bobs in here. And you can see a lot of what we've done is actually already in here. So your welcome screen, I suppose, gives you a snapshot of your control center and takes you through the bits that you need to do to get your system set up right. Now, one thing I, I will do here is go to look and feel and go to Mate Tweak. And then see this thing here, panel, we'll click on that. Oh, actually on desktop as well. I want to show computer rubbish. And if you have a network, stick that on. Otherwise you can leave it off. Or even if you have a network, you don't need it on. So once we've that done, we'll go to panel. And now familiar won't be good for you because you're, it's not familiar to you unless you're an old Linux desktop user. So you want to change it to either Cupertino, which is a kind of a, an Apple Mac style look, or a Redmond look. Now, to be honest, I think Cupertino is probably the best. And I say that because with the Cupertino uh, panel, you get a dock down on the bottom, right, which has all your various applications that you normally use down there. And you also get visual indications of basically everything you need. 
So another few tweaks I would do for setting this up is click on your Mate menu. Now go to Zoom. Start that up. Right, and then go down here and see here. So we'll just hover over Zoom and then right click and then keep in dock. Right, so when you close Zoom now, see, it's still in, in your dock. So basically, whenever you start up your machine and you want to use Zoom, all you have to do is go down here and click there. Otherwise, you'll have to go up to Menu and either type in the name, and we'll just take another name, we'll go for Skype. Type in the name or go to its particular uh, place. So we'll just get rid of this actually. And we'll navigate to where it's stored. See here we've got Skype. So we'll just click on this. And again, if you want to keep that in your dock, just press keep in dock. Now we'll just go down here again. Hang on a second now. I'll just turn this off for a sec. Now, I want to be able to, or let's say there's something that's in here that you don't want, like show desktop. Well, you have to leave that there. Or your clock. You can show the date, which is quite handy. Oh, except it's not available. Uh, with this, this is your web browser, so you can choose to keep it in dock or not have it in dock. Now, I think that your web browser is just, you know, a no-brainer. It has to be in the dock. So, and your file manager as well, which is called Kaya. Uh, that's an essential one. Your control center, which is more or less the stuff you saw in, in your welcome screen. That's an important one to have. And of course, your, your welcome screen. I would keep that for as long as possible because, let me see now, uh, that really is an important application to have. So, you know, keep it as long as you feel you need it and then when you don't need any more, turn it off. Um, so that's about it. I suppose then there's also the likes of your, let's see now, your email. So your email is called evolution. Let's see actually how clever this is. Let's go email. Look at that. I don't even have to know the name of the application. So, but evolution is your, your groupware. Right, so it does email, it does contacts, it does tasks, your calendar, the whole shebang. Right, so the first thing you'll be greeted with when you open Evolution is the welcome screen. So it basically takes you through the, the next few screens, will allow you to connect your email accounts and import files from other applications. So you just click next. Now, if you have a backup made, you can restore from that backup. Uh, but otherwise, you're taken on to identity and you put in your name, you put in your email address, you apply to organization and stuff, whatever. And then we won't be able to move. I'll just put in Mark at googly.au. Okay. So let me say next. And see, it's looking up account details. So let's see now. If I go back and I'll put in google.com. Right, so we just go next. And it should actually populate it. I probably messed it up by, actually, I'll just cancel, okay? So let's start all this again. Email. 
Then we have to bug my screen up again. So we'll say, er, no, next. Mark. Mark 23, we'll say, at google.com. Now look up mail server details. Looking up account, and there we go. Look at that. So it's already put everything that I need in. So then I just say next. Gives you the option to add your Google calendars to this account as well. So you can see it's all fairly well set up. And that's it. You're all done. So then just say apply. Now I'm not going to apply because that's not my email account and all the rest of it. But And basically, if that was my email account, this would now be populated with all my emails and I would have uh, my to-do list from my Google account, my contacts from my Google account to be there. Calendar would have all my important dates in it, so on and so forth. So this is a really useful program to have. So I'll just close that down again. And I think that's probably about it really for for this. I um, hope you enjoyed it and I uh, hope it proves useful more than enjoyable. Okay, thanks everyone.